we're going to talk about proxemics or the distance that people prefer between themselves and other people. It's a key part of communication and daily interaction. I'm working out of BB and Masterson's book on communicating in small group, but this research is in numerous books across the field. So let's get into it. So the key point here, the overarching idea, as we look at all of these things, is that the amount of space that we put between ourselves and others depends upon a lot, like the relationship, the situation, the context. If you were in, for example, a crowded room, like a crowded nightclub, you would allow and feel okay with a much more personal contact with other people than you would if you were in an outdoor park or other kinds of big public situation. So it really depends on a lot of factors. Nevertheless, there are some norms that we are going to look at. Proxemics, quickly put, is the study of how close or far we choose to be from other people and objects. And studying proxemics helps us understand our own use of personal space and gives us clues about our relationship with other people. Edward T. Hall developed this research. He came up with the four zones of space. The closest is the intimate zone between zero and one and a half feet. The personal zone, which is one and a half feet to four feet. The social zone, which is four to 12 feet. And beyond that is the public zone, beyond 12 feet. So we're going to look at each of these and what they all mean in order. So first let's look at the intimate zone. This is between zero and 1.5 feet. So zero means you're probably touching and most personal and intimate conversations happen in this distance. We see this distance between friends and intimate partners, best friends in fact, and parents and young children especially. And we only really see it in group situations and in a work situation. Let's say if somebody is leaning in to whisper something to somebody for just a moment. This is the distance where kisses and hugs happen. This is the distance where headbutts happen. So this is an extremely intimate zone where almost anything can happen, and which is why we allow very few people into this intimate zone. The second zone is the personal zone. This is 1.5 feet to four feet. Conversations with family and close friends happen in this zone. In groups, let's say you're in a group setting, you might be this distance from other people, but some people in the group may feel that this is too personal. This kind of space is a bit too close. This is the distance where handshakes happen, high five, happen, a slap on the back would happen for a good job. This is also, though, fighting distance, which is why not everybody is comfortable with it. If somebody is close enough to punch you or kick you, then there is a bit of vulnerability we may feel when we're in this personal zone. Number three is the social zone. This is four to 12 feet. Most group interactions happen in this zone. This is where interactions with coworkers and other kinds of professionals occurs. This is close enough to pass objects back and forth, close enough to sit around a table, close enough to talk to somebody across a desk in an office situation. Still, sometimes, because it's four to 12 feet, sometimes it's a little too close to people if people are jammed in there. And so what you'll see is often people trying to maintain their territory in very specific ways. For example, they might make big gestures to claim a little bit more space around them. They might place objects, like they might put a coffee mug in a certain position so that no one comes into that space. They may lay their papers and notebooks out around a, around a table that way. They may choose a certain seating arrangement that helps them maintain a little bit more space. This is the social zone, and because it happens in the workplace and it has such a huge expanse from four to 12 feet, you see a lot of maneuvering around this distance. And then the last one is the public zone, 12 feet and beyond. Teachers and public speakers often stand this distance when we're interacting with each other. This is the distance you'd likely choose, however, if you were in an almost empty restaurant or an almost empty library or museum. Certainly if you were outdoors in some public situation, you would be 12 feet and beyond. If you get closer than this in one of those public situations where you don't have a relationship with other people, Usually there's a pretty good reason for it, like there's a big crowd there. Otherwise we choose lots of space. So why does this matter? Well, our increased awareness of the kinds of proxemics preferences that we have and others have will help us to adjust to other people in conversations and in relationships. For example, 
You may want to respect other people's needs for more space. Usually people have a comfortable distance that they're willing to be to someone else. They have a bubble and you don't want to enter that bubble unless the other person seems like they want to be that close to you. So the key tip takeaway here, especially when you're getting personal, is it's it's riskier to get too close to somebody, to stand too close, than it is to maintain a slightly more respectful distance. So don't get too close too fast. Make sure you maintain a distance and let the other person adjust to you as well. So question of the day, have you ever gotten feedback on your personal use of space? Do you stand too close? Do you stand too far? I would love to hear your comments and your comfort level with distance to other people in that comment section below. So thanks, I will see you soon, take care.